Spirit of God in this place. Hallelujah. I will say what the Spirit of the Lord is here to do. To get all of us set you free, to set the captives free. Because he's in the house. Amen. I know y'all want to go in that man. I want to get you to the word of God. Amen. And we will have a little time to shout afterwards. Amen. First giving out to God, all the officials in the house, the administrators and friends, Mother Clark, as the bearer of my own mother. We just thank God for all the officials in the house today. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, uh, Sunday night, uh, Y'all missed the treat. Another Lofton preached, 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 and preached some more. Amen? We had a good old time. Amen, amen. So you missed it on Sunday night. We had a good old time here. I know it was, uh, we had three services that day, but nevertheless, God was in the house. Give it honor to my friend and her husband, uh, the Purdies and their family. Thank God for them all the way from Texas. Amen. Praise Amen. And all the ones that are here, I want to give special thanks to our musicians. I was over there uh, in my office and I can hear what's going on in the sanctuary, so that means watch what y'all doing in the sanctuary. Amen? I can hear. And I was hearing the organ and the keyboard going and the drums going, and I heard this. Dum, 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 dum. All right! And I said, he must be in the house. <laughs> thank God for your brother's family. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank God for everyone that comes to lift up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I won't talk to you much, but get straight to the Word of God and talk you through this. Right. On last week, we told you that something big yeah. is getting ready to come yeah. out of this. Amen. Yeah. How many believe something big is coming out of your situation? Amen. Ah, Jesus. Amen. This is part two of something big is coming out of this. Amen. Would you turn with me to Deuteronomy 7? chapter and starting at the 17th verse to the 22nd and put your finger also in 20 Exodus 23 and 29. Would you mind if I talk to you today? Amen. Y'all woke me up last week. So this week I'm going to try my best to talk to you. But amen. <laughs> Deuteronomy, yeah, we'll see. Deuteronomy 7, 17 through 22. Elder Richardson, would you read? If thou shalt say in thine heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not be afraid of them, uh -huh. but shall well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh yes. and unto all Egypt. The great temptation which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the strength that arm, whereby the Lord thy God broke thee out. So shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them yes. until they are left and hide themselves from thee. Year. This is what God has said. I will not drive them out in one year. 
lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Lest the land become unoccupied and the beasts of the fields multiply against thee. Uh huh. Little by little. Small, small steps. Mm -hmm. Small steps. Little by little. Right. Small steps. Yeah. Little by little. Yeah. I will drive them out. Yeah. Keep on. From before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. Right. Yeah. Not until your oh. brother increased, but until you increase. Yeah. multitude 
All right. Uh -huh. That when we them out of Egypt, yes. some Jews and non-Jews, some believers and non-believers, uh -huh. and, and now they march with him. And the Bible says that the Israel traveled from Ramsey to Sukkot, 600 plus women and children, and the mixed multitude went up with them also. When God has blessed you and has anointed you, there are people that are looking at you how you deal with afflictions, how you deal with your situation. And they are looking at you that when you become out, come out of your boundaries and the limitations that you have on God, many of them come out with you. The word for many is Rehab, which is Hebrew, and the, for mixed is Geher, means multitude. This mixed multitude came with Israel out of Egypt, besides the two million. And they attached themselves to Israel. They attached themselves to the blessing. <laughs> And they attach themselves to promise. You are the children of blessing and you are the children of promise. And there will be people and things that attach itself to you in order to be blessed. Because they realize that even in your afflictions and your turmoil,
folks mistreated you. Yes. All right. You didn't do a mumbling thing. All right. Hmm. But folks mistreated you and misunderstood your motives and, and what you was trying to do. Ah. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. this ain't even in the notes. Yeah. All right. Misunderstood what you was doing. Yes. Said that you thought you was all that, but yes. you yes. wasn't all that. Yes. You were just only submitting under the hand yes. of God. And yes. the Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. that they had to make. This 
this is what God offered them grace, even though they were not Jews, offered them grace that they would be able to be intertwined into his people. And so they were circumcised as one. They experienced the miracles, and we have experienced miracles. But there is a problem. We witness deliverance, but we never delivered ourselves. You never preach. We see the bitter water turn sweet, but we're still bitter on the inside. We feel and see the water flowing, but yet we are still thirsty. We come to eat. But we go home still home. Not only do they see the grace of God, but we have to experience the grace of God. So many times we see it, but we don't experience it. And we do not show it. Because how can we show something that we have never experienced? That's why we have people that are in the church that look down on folks that are going through. Jesus. Look at them like they're filthy, dirty, and nasty. And don't recognize that you was that five years ago in God. Yeah, I don't feel it. 
That's all right. I'm going to preach it to you. The mixed multitude was similar to us because we've been all mixed up. And now God has called us, baptized us in the Red Sea, and now he's called us in the wilderness. Now we have a wilderness experience. When are you going to show up, God? When are you going to supply my needs, God? When are you going to send down? When are you going to make the bitter water sweet? When are you going to change my situation? You're sitting there wondering when God said, just have faith in me. Just trust me because if you trust me, I will not even let your clothes wear out. Matter of fact, I won't even let it go out of fashion. I will everything you need. Just trust me. But see, in the wilderness, they have to deal with some things, and I know some of y'all gonna be mad at me, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. In the wilderness, they have to deal with some things. It wasn't easy. They have to deal with some characters and people. First, we find prophetess Miriam. I'm walking something up in here. It's alright. It's alright. Now this was the one. This was Moses' older sister. And now she was the one when they crossed the Red Sea. She began to get a tambourine and sing a new song. She was a prophetess and a leader of women. She was the one. But Miriam had a problem, like some of us have in the house of God. Let me go here, but let me go ahead and go. First of all, Miriam, she had a problem with leadership. She spoke against leadership. Nothing big will come out of you when you walk in rebellion. <laughs> Numbers 12, 1 through 16. Moses got married. Wow. <laughs> and she was a sister of color. <laughs> from the tribe of Cush, an Ethiopian. <laughs> Miriam said, Uh -huh. I speak to him in a dream. If there's a prophet among you, uh -huh. I speak 
to them in riddles, right. dreams, right. and visions. Right. But read on. Not so with my servant Moses. But not so with Moses. Not so with the leader. See, I got to straighten some things out. Right. I got to we're going to big things, but I got to straighten this out. Straighten it out. Prophets and prophets, you are no higher than your no leader. Yeah. 
Priests got to learn how to clean up and be one mind. Yeah. And that's towards God. Yeah. You cannot be building idols and then worship the true and living God. And some of us priests and some of us have made idols out of people and you can't do it. Yeah. Let me go back this to Mary because this is what God is saying. God told them that he speaks to the leader. He does you have to do riddles and dreams, but he speaks to the leader. Amen. But God told Moses, said, tell him to come out of the tent. Amen. Come out of the house of God. Amen. The place where I dwell, come out. I'm going to meet you outside the house. Aaron and, Aaron and Miriam came out the house along with Moses. And God told him this word, told him that word. And as soon as he told him the word, then he walked away. And Miriam was slapped with leprosy. You talk against a man and a woman of God, God will slap you with something nobody can get out of you. But prayer by the man and woman of God that you were talking about. She turned white as snow. Aaron the high priest couldn't do nothing for her. He had to go back to Moses and Moses don't leave her dead. Moses began to pray to God that God would deliver her, and she was delivered. Yeah. <laughs> Priests, ministers of God. Talking about the high priest, the second thing. You have to get your house in order. This was, uh, this was Aaron's son. They came before God and they brought strange fire. Yeah, that's what yeah. Sometimes we got in the house of God, we in our own houses. We let them do any and everything and then we come to, to God holy, 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 holy outside. While we listen to junk on the TV and on the radio, while they're doing any and everything in our house. And now we got strange fire. Is dead. And he told Aaron, don't you dare weep over. Sometimes you gotta release your children. And you gotta tell them, God, whatever you do, I'm just gonna give you the glory. I'm gonna give you the praise. Because God, you're in control of them. I'm not gonna fight against you. I'm not gonna pray against your will. I said, nevertheless, have your will. Reason why we gotta get that way because something big is coming out of us and we can allow that worry, we can allow those things to hinder us. Some of us will drop the Bible, drop Sunday school, drop church just because our children are in trouble. If we would drop everything, if we would go down to the supermarket or the jailhouse, cuss the jailer out, cuss everybody out, you done did everything against my child. Well, baby, they didn't do nothing, they're just obeying the law. But you done lost religion and that's what it is. Religion. Yeah. 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 Going up there with a foreign language. <laughs> and they looking at you. Who is this? From see the faith. Is this the one you're talking about? They go to that little church that's bumping and rocking and shouting and falling out. Is this the people? Well, these people are cussing folks out. They don't want nothing to do with them. These people are cussing people out. I'm trying, I'm trying. I want to give y'all a message where y'all can shout and holler and run around the place. Yeah. Then the other thing we gotta deal with. Before we can go and have something big come out of us. Because see, we have to understand, even though they came out big, there's a pruning process in the wilderness. God sometimes has to cut you all the way to the stone. Yes, he does. In order to get everything out of you that he needs out of you. Oh, you, you look like you're flourishing. You look like you're prospering. But you're not bringing any fruit. So in order that you might bring fruit, he got to cut you back or destroy you. And some of you are in that place. Either he's going to cut you or destroy
just hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They're cussing you out. You go on, give him the glory. You don't even recognize yourself. Because before he cuts you back, you would have cut them. Sure, whatever. That's the truth. Uh, Jesus. But the next one is rebellion. The son of Korah came to Moses and said, and, this is, and I got to talk to you about leadership. I got to talk to you because it's important yeah. Yeah. that we go to the next place that we know about leadership. Right. Son of the Korah came to him, they were stirring up some trouble, and they said, Moses, we hear from God just like you do. You ain't no different from us. We hear God, how God's speaking, and everything. You ain't no different. They wanted the priesthood. Why are you seeking positions? When the Bible says it comes from above. They wanted the position of Aaron's son. And God had not given it to him. So they spoke against Moses and Aaron. And God said, tell them to come all of them. 250 at one time. Stood before Moses. And said we can do everything we can do and probably can do it better. Oh and I guarantee you, there's a whole bunch of folks sitting in here. You can do what I'm doing and doing anything better, but God called me and not you. Oh, say that. That's it. That's it. And that's the truth. One bishop. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And so let me give the complaining moment to the folks. Y'all move back. God's getting ready to do something. Folks that complain against leadership right. and, and rebellion. Yes. God's going to do something with you. God's yeah. going to deal with you. Yeah. Yes. And it is not going to be nice. The, the Bible says that as Moses began to speak and said, if I had not been faithful to the house, if I had not been a man of God, God, if I had not been, let them live another day. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do nothing to them. But as Moses spoke that and finished the ground will open up and swallow 250 of them. One time. Rebellion will take you out of here. That's the 16, don't turn to it, but I'll just give it to you. It says 16, 19, and 20. The last thing we must deal with. Moses, the people were complaining about food and bread. And he made the bitter water sweet. And now Moses turns to them and said, God is going to do something. And then now, manna fell from heaven. And they said, what is this? God, he said, God has supplied bread for you. But the fourth point on this one is I begin to bring you to our can close. Greed. All right. Yeah. 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 Moses gave them instructions on how to satisfy the hunger. He said, go out and pick it up for one day. That's right. Right. But the second day, pick up twice because you don't work on the Sabbath. Right. But there was some right. that went out and got much. Yeah. 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 And then there was others that went and got little. But the one that got little was satisfied. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because God stretched it. Yeah. But the ones that got much, Moses said, don't leave it till the daytime, right. the morning. They got much and gathered it up, That's and when right. they left it, it began to rot. See some of your things because you're greedy. Oh. You don't want to help nobody, but you and no foe and no more. You greedy. God cannot bless you. So we're dealing with the wilderness experience. Wow. But the Bible says in Zacharias, despise not the day of small things. Sometimes God has to cut you back and it seems like it's small. You came out great and you came out with so much but you was mixed up. And now God has brought you back to the small thing. Yes. Yes, many times we begin to complain and complain about the small things. 
and many times we complain ourselves out of great blessings. But see, God begins to tell us to do all things without murmuring and complaining. And see, what God begins to do for us is one of two things. He anoints us for a position. But so many times that we're not increased enough to occupy that position. So God will bring us like he did King David. He brought him into the palace. Already anointed him king, but he brought him into the palace and he said, Sit here and learn something. See, so many of us complain. God, you gave me this position, and somebody's sitting in my position. God, get him out of my position. I want to occupy this place. But God said, I can't do it till you increase. Uh, what do I have to increase? I got the increase in my love. I got the increase in my faith. I got the increase in my wisdom. I got the increase in my knowledge. Because if I don't increase, that devil will occupy my territory. Slow it down, slow it down just a minute. So we begin to get in that place. And God is trying to teach us something, Mother. He's teaching us how to lead. And sometimes it's other bad leaders. But it's teaching us how, what not to do and what to do. So he brought David in this place underneath Saul. And he'd already anointed him king of Israel. But David did not murmur against the man of God. He even said, touch not my anointing. He can do my prophets no harm. He did not complain. He just began like the songwriter said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is shall continually be in my God. No matter what you throw against me, I'm going to bless the name of the Lord. And then, the second thing he does for us, he'll do us like he did Joseph. He took Joseph through all kinds of pains. And he brought him and he set him in the palace. Second in charge. See, this is what we don't like. He set Joseph in a large place, second in charge. So many of us, we want to be the head man or the head woman.
what does we have to increase? He said, little by little, I will drive them out. It's some hangups and some habits all of us have. And God said, I'm doing it little by little. Little by little. Because I got something big coming out of you, but, but your attitude, your way you think, has to change. It has to increase. You have to increase in wisdom and knowledge. The Bible said we destroy it from a lack of knowledge. Some of us have knowledge, and we pray for knowledge, but then we begin to destroy people or lord over people because we have knowledge. I'm sorry to walk heavy up in here, but I have knowledge. God can reveal something. You're like, God, I want you to reveal something to me because I'm an intercessor prayer. Now that you don't, it doesn't reveal that somebody's creeping and doing some things. Now you're ready to judge them and put your nose on them. But you don't have enough wisdom to understand how to pray for them. That's what Paul said. If you lack wisdom, ask the God and He will give you wisdom. You gotta ask God for wisdom in knowledge. God, I need wisdom to know how to do it, how to interact. Because the Bible says, be wise as a servant and gentle as a dove. He that wicked souls must be wise. You got the knowledge, but now you're going you know. But you have no wisdom. Can I just, just say it like I want to say that you ain't got no tact. I'm gonna make it plain. Make it plain. Lord just revealed knowledge to me of what you're going through. You ain't got enough wisdom. To shut your mouth and whisper in their ear. All right. You want to be a lying one. Wow. And you driving folks out of the house. You're telling them the business in front of everybody. And they don't want nobody to know. But you don't have no wisdom to listen to God's mouth and say, shut up, this is not the season all the time. That's why you have to increase in wisdom and knowledge. Your love must be increased. James 4 and 7. He said, Beloved, let us love one another. God is love one another. Love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. For God is love. And a person that doesn't love doesn't know God. You say you know God? Proof. How much do you love? How do you love people? I got you. You say I love God, but you don't even love your friends, you don't even love your family, you don't even love people. But God is love. You can't say a kind word about nobody. Ooh, I love the Lord. Well, guess what? <laughs> you must not love the Lord if you can't love everybody. Everybody. Not your picks and chooses. Not the ones that do good to me. You have to love everybody. I love you just like you're my sister. Love you just like you're my brother. I ain't gonna try to backstab my brother. Because I love him that much. But until you increase in that area, and so many of us, we are depleted of love. We got attitudes with folks that we don't even know because somebody else is telling us something about them. And we have that guy that oh, I can't stand him. Well, guess what? God can't stand you. Last thing we must increase 
is our faith. No matter what I go through, my faith is intact. No matter what I'm dealing with, my faith is intact. Because my faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. My faith tells me that when the enemy comes in like a flood, then God will lift them a step. My faith tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And all that rises up against me shall fall. My faith leads me by the still water. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. My faith tells me just hold on. Pastor, I'm about ready to give up. 
about ready to throw in the towel. I'm about ready to let go. God said, I brought you here for a reason. It's because I'm cutting on you to bring the fruit out of you and something big out of you. God said he's doing it. Lady right there the, from Texas, would you come? Right there, yes. You looked in the middle. Not you. Yes, you, would you come? Hallelujah. I ain't going to tell you business. I'm just going to tell you the good things that God has in store for you. You know God has some great things for you. Come on, Pastor Joe, Brother Joe, if you would come. You know God has some great things for you. You've been through a lot. It should have destroyed you. But God kept you. Kept you for a reason. The reason why he kept you. Because you got joy, unspeakable joy. On the inside. When you was going through, all you could do was just praise God and give God thanks. Mm. But it hurts so much. Even in the midnight hours, I see you weeping and you ask God why. But God said, because I chose you even in your mother's womb. <laughs> I chose you. I chose you. You have to understand. I chose you to do great things. God said, don't lose your praise because while you're praising me, I'm setting ambush against the enemy. Uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
your ministers and training at 5 o'clock. And everybody else is at 6 o'clock here. But realize that something big.